that it has uh, energized the Congress cadres who were dispirited and they feel that they can win. So we will, I think, see the effect of that in the upcoming elections in Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan. Secondly, I think it has demoralized the BJP cadres to some extent. It has uh, busted this myth of the popularity of Mr. Modi that he can win the elections. It has also increased the stature of uh, Rahul Gandhi. So even though Congress managed to win the Karnataka elections, the popularity of uh, Narendra Modi as a Prime Minister is still there. So, I mean, the first choice for the people as a Prime Minister is still Narendra Modi. That's not entirely true, may not necessarily be true today. Yeah. He has had the kind of exposure which no other uh, Prime Minister anywhere in India or in the world has ever had. I mean, his whole 24 hours a day uh, is spent in just propaganda and image making and so on. Are you saying that the, the, the propaganda missionary is working good for Narendra Modi rather than his quality as a leader? Yes, I mean, it is only working for uh, Modi. It is only to just project his image so that in the people's minds only his uh, his face and his name comes. And uh, of course, all kinds of falsehoods are also being propagated. But I think uh, all that is no longer uh, working very much. And to some extent, it's also becoming counterproductive. Popularity of uh, Narendra Modi, if it is diminishing or it is coming down? It is certainly diminishing. Diminishing. Order. Okay. So if the opposition parties, they, if they want to take the advantage of that, th there should be unity in the opposition. Is it working in the, uh, I mean, is that working in the good, uh, the, the right direction? No, it's not necessary that there should be sort of a national unity in the opposition. As we saw in West Bengal, there was no unity in the opposition. And yet they defeated the BJP, the Trinamool Congress defeated the BJP. So uh, this kind of thing we will see uh, happening in many states. Uh, but yes, there needs to be some strategic uh, understanding between the uh, opposition parties, uh, at least in some states. The Karnataka election result has definitely boosted the morale of Congress. But if they continue to have the big brotherly attitude towards other parties, will that help? Yes, uh, I think the Congress needs to be more magnanimous, more generous as the sort of main national opposition party needs to be more magnanimous and generous with the regional parties. And in those states where the regional parties are much stronger than the Congress, uh, the Congress should just support those regional parties. In 2019, BJP retained the power with increased majority. And what would be the likely outcome in the next 2024 elections, general elections? No, the BJP tally will be very substantially reduced. Uh, I expect it to come down to about 200. 200? Yes, okay. they will lose about 100 seats in many states. Starting, if you start from the south, they will lose a number of seats in Karnatak. They will lose, of course, in the west, in West Bengal. They will lose in Bihar, very large number of seats in Bihar. They will also lose a few in UP. They will lose many in uh, Madhya Pradesh. They will lose many in Rajasthan. Uh, uh, they will lose many in Haryana. Uttarakhand, Himachal and so on. So therefore, uh, overall, I expect them to lose about 100 seats. So then, if at all they are going to retain the power, then they have to depend on the allies or, or other regional parties. With 200, I don't think they will be able to cobble up a majority. Uh, it's only if they are above 225 that they may be able to get some regional parties to support them, but even if they are below 230, I don't see that uh, Modi can become the Prime Minister. Below 230, uh, even if the BJP is able to form the government with the help of some regional parties, it will be minus Modi. Then who will be the uh, Prime Minister? So it could be anybody like Gadkari. Gadkari would be a kind of... Uh, consensus candidate. 
uh, can be a consensus candidate. In the World Media Freedom Index, India's position has further slipped to 161. Last time, in the last year, it was 150 and now it is 161. What does it mean? It means that uh, the media is no longer uh, viewed as being free and independent in India. And that's happening for two reasons. One, much of the mainstream media has been brought under the control of the government by inducements, by way of government advertisements, by sometimes even be packets being sent to editors and anchors, etc. And also by threats of using the agencies like income tax, ED, CBI, etc. against those media organizations which don't fall in line. In Kerala, we are not, I mean, we are not getting any uh, money packets or, or anything <laughs> like that. But uh, the state government, CPM ruled state government, they are, they are using the state agencies like police to intimidate media and media persons. Is it a good trend? No, no, it's a very bad trend. Unfortunately, uh, some of the state governments are also doing that. That's, uh, that's very bad. And uh, therefore, uh, it is true that uh, though the BJP may be the sort of worst offender in all this, but uh, some other uh, party-led state governments are also responsible for this state of affairs. Especially the left parties. Yes, yes. Recently, we Madhubhumi News had a very bad experience uh, from the police of the Kerala state government. They captured the mobile phones of our journalists and cameramen and the crew. And how can they capture uh, the, the, the mobile phones of journalists and media persons? No, that's an invasion and violation of their privacy rights. In fact, uh, many investigative agencies are doing this routinely now, ED, etc. Totally wrong, illegal, violation of the rights of privacy. You can only seek that much information which is absolutely essential for your investigation. Can't do a roving and fishing inquiry, seizing computers, seizing mobile phones, and just mining all the data in that. That's a violation of your right to privacy. The opening of the new parliament building, uh, Tamil is being projected like anything. So, I mean, I think that's a good, I mean, new strategy by the, 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 the BJP uh, party and the government. How is it going to benefit uh, BJP in Tamil Nadu? No, I don't think it will benefit the BJP in Tamil Nadu, given their long history of being sort of anti-regional languages and only pro-Hindi, etc. And given the strong Hindi slant of the BJP leaders. So they are doing this tactically, but I don't think it's going to help them much in Tamil Nadu. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.